Welcome back to the acting analysis and tips for animators. And today we're going to take a look at the movie Run. Love this movie, a lot of cool stuff. I have a lot of sequences I wanna talk about, but before I do, if you're new to this channel, hi, my name is JD, and I do acting analysis clips like these. I do animation analysis clips, I do product reviews, rig reviews, lectures, feedback, I post all kinds of things. So as always, this is the YouTube page. Feel free to browse around. If you like it, subscribe. If you don't wanna subscribe, that's fine too. It helps my channel grow if you do though, but that's it for the pitch. Let's go to the sequences. First up, we have, this is the beginning of the movie. We have her coming in, and all I wanna show is what these characters on the side are doing. They're waiting to turn towards the door. She comes in and they realize she's coming in and she is not aware, her, of the incoming bad news. And you can see how turns away, gets ready. You can see the other characters here, hands together, getting ready, kind of sort of turning away. You can see this how they turn just because they know it's coming. You can see all of that so that the whole focus that ends up being on her getting closer to the impending bad news. So it's not just about the main character. Obviously, this should be focused when you animate, but you can have side characters, you can have props that we have that can kind of re-emphasize a certain moment or also kind of prepare the audience for something else. This all kind of gives us an impression of hmm, something is about to happen, which then happens right there. And actually, we continue with this. She gets forward to that. And this is something where this could be your pants bam shot. Again, this is a very serious subject matter, but you can always take something serious and obviously make it totally different for your animation. In this case, this would be her seeing something, reacting something. What I like about that is that you have this long progression, how she reacts. And then as the camera goes down, it reveals what she's reacting to. And you can have a bit of a focus change where she's in focus, then little baby's in focus. And then the next thing I wanna show, it is all part of the same sequence, is that she's all happy, she sees the baby. Then she says, is she going to be okay? And when she says that, you can see that she waits and waits and waits and no one is saying anything in the background because the baby is not going to be okay. And you can see that change, but she realizes, wait, no one's answering, this can't be good, and head turn. So for you, this is something where if you do have lip sync and the character is asking a question, you don't have to stop the shot once the lip sync is done. This is something I'm repeating a lot in this series. And in this case, you can have the character wait, 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 and then react because no one is responding to her question. I think this could be also a really good addition to your shot where it's not just lip sync, but then you go into your creative pantomime acting because that's not part of the lip sync. Next up, it's totally different and it's finger acting. And I like this how we have that box first, right? This tells us, okay, tissues, feel better. This must be something bad or sad. And then you have the hand coming in and the hand bringing the box into the character. I like how we follow this box is also important. And it's all about finger acting here. I love this, how she is moving all this. You can see that little wiggle in the fingers as she grabs the box and grabs the paper here, tissue paper. You can see how much the fingers are moving. She's very nervous. There's a lot of agitation there. And then she continues into actually pushing this away. And in the line, she says something, I'm paraphrasing, it's going to be okay. I can fight through this, it's going to be okay. But you can see all the nervousness, you can see all that business. And what I like about this is that when she says, I'm going to be okay, you can see all that, that you know, all of that movement here, the fingers, and she has this, I can fight through this. And it's as if now all of that is gone. It's a very decisive fist and gesture or just kind of a pose. I'm going to be okay. And the moment she says that, she goes into beep, that and that. So there's just that short moment of, I'm going to be okay. I can do this. It's very decisive. They're separate. They're fish on the table. I can do this. But within half a second, she says again, but I don't know. I don't know. And then you can see that all the nervousness comes back into the fingers. I think this is really cool. I'm not sure if you want this on your reel, just the finger acting type of thing, but I like this in addition to her shot. Just as always, every single little detail counts. So think about that when you have characters where you see the fingers, what could you put in there to kind of emphasize certain moments or in this case, you know, resolve and she has decided and then she breaks that by doing this. Also like how this continues, by the way, and we continue here, they're grabbing tissues. I like how they go about it, right? So we follow this, let's go forward here and this person, grabs one and hands it over. Then this character grabs one, brings it over and goes, nah, I need more. It's going to be sad, I need more. Again, just kind of, we don't need to see the face. We don't need to hear anything, but we understand what's going on there. And then for the whole contrast, because everybody is grabbing this and is sad and you know, they're talking about all of this, this character actually doesn't take it, but brings it over to the main character. And here's the reveal, da, 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 I'm on the phone. I don't care what any of you are saying. 
and I love that. And this movie has a lot of just a lot of reveals, camera moves and things where we are seeing a reveal of a specific situation or a character. It is more about that. But I love that too, where then we can see the character and then she talks blah, 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 blah. But think about that. If you do have a camera move, you can use that to reveal certain things for comedic value to show contrast how everybody is involved in this and being sad and not involved at all because she's thinking about something totally different. And I'm actually going to continue with this. This is later on where she says it's going to be just fine, blah, blah, blah. My daughter is just fine. And then it's this gesture at the end. That. And I like this because it's everybody is using the Kleenex. They're all they're all sad. They're all needed because they're crying. And for her, she goes, I don't need this. Here, go take it. I'm going to be just fine. Go on. And again, this is if you have a prop and especially if other characters have used this prop in a specific way, you can use this in a complete opposite way, whatever you want to do, but it can re-emphasize her stance of, I don't care, I don't need this, I'm strong, my daughter is strong, here, take this, move on. I just like that moment. Now, moving forward a little bit, as we are revealing the daughter, she's here preparing food, you can see this all healthy, all healthy, and then, I mean, this is, previously you can see that the daughter is in a wheelchair, but this is a very subtle thing, but you can see that obviously she is stuck in that wheelchair, and she can just sit and there's that extra moment of the legs. I don't know if that's intentional, but to me, it kind of re-emphasizes the contrast between the two characters, right? They are kind of facing each other or facing off, depending on you know how the movie progresses there. But you can see the contrast that she can move her legs and she can. So it always kind of sets up what the, the, uh, the advantages and disadvantages are of the character. But then again, also an advantage, but I will not spoil too much just yet. So not that this is huge, but you can still think about that as you have a character. And if you want to think about contrast, because to me is always when you have two or more characters, you want to introduce contrast. You want to introduce something where they are different. And this is very subtle where it's underneath, it's right close to the edge of the frame, but it's still something that is different compared to this character. So just think about those details. How can you add things, be it in gestures and movements and poses and props, that will give us some interesting contrast so that they're not all the same and mushy and we don't we don't really understand where the differences are. This sequence goes into what I said before about reveals and clear cuts and imagery. Like I like this a lot. This movie is, is, has a lot of that where you can see all the props, very busy, lots of stuff here. She's studying, clear pose, clear composition. It's all really nice. Then she hears something. You can see this, huh? And then you have clear pan over to male, then clear character, with this, I'm bringing the mail. Then you have that where she is gone. And I like this a lot where it's kind of, you have this moment of one, you have the character, I see this. Two, this is something that I really want. Three, she is so excited that we pan where she's already leaving the frame to get to the mail. So this can be used in a certain way like this. This is a shot by Bryce McGovern and you can see this in a scrub forward where it's all about this reveal here. So you got the, oh, I'm strong. Creature wakes up, he realizes, wait, this is not a good idea. And then we pan over to this. Kind of that idea of you can use an exit of a character so you don't see it anymore, where you have to reveal the character as you follow with the camera. And with that, you can go into that joke where the character is really, really far away. Just like in here, when we see this and we pan over to show that the character is so excited, we don't even see that she is there turning around, getting over. It just re-emphasizes the moment of, I'm there, I'm there, I wanna go. So if you are considering camera moves and reveals, I think this is really clean in terms of one, two, three, four, five, in terms of all the steps and the progression until the funny ending there. And speaking of which, now this is getting into spoiler territory as I'm progressing now. All the things I'm gonna show will reveal more of the story and the characters, so be warned. This is going to ruin certain things if you haven't seen the movie. So she's on the phone and she's asking about the color of the pill because all she sees is the gray and the green. And she asks, well, what is the color? And then instead of hearing the person on the phone saying what color it is, it cuts to this. They don't say red, but we know it's red because it's a, it's a really nice cut where it's occupying the same space and it's a very bold color change. And then we go to her, we realize she is the one that's handling the color. She's the culprit. And it goes over to this where she dropped the phone. We can hear the person, hello, hello, hello. And then it cuts to her being defeated. Oh, I can't believe this. Again, not that this is huge in terms of something you could use for your real terms of character animation, but this movie just has a lot of really fun cuts and clear imagery with really clean single shots of props or characters. Again, something for you to think about 
if you want to go beyond with your shots or you can do a short story for something in terms of composition and cuts. But I just wanted to show that because I like it. And here's another one where this is the beginning of the movie where it will reveal the baby and then it cuts towards the ending of the movie where we can see her again. It's very, very similar. And as it goes forward, it will reveal the character here. Again, spoiler, but something I wanted to show, something I like a lot when we have repeat images or foreshadowing or a preparation, whatever it is, but I like that. And the movie is full of that stuff. And one more. So in this case, she wants to figure out what the pills are. So you can see this, there's a lot of action. She has to go through all the characters. She's hurrying through all the crowds here. And it's again, something where we cut to mundane things. It's kind of quiet. And then, ta-ta, reveal the character, including the music, which I, can, I can't play here, but I love this. It comes in a lot of energy there. And as she goes through, you can see foreground elements giving more energy. She goes this way foreground element goes this way, creates a lot of energy. And then we can see wipe reveal to a long line that makes her wait. And again, I love that. It's at that big, big element here that hides everything for a more extra push on the reveal. I like that. And then as she realizes this is not a good idea, you can see all the, the fluttering, the thought process there. You can see her eyes and the eye lids here, lots of little half blinks. Oh man. And to re-emphasize that she looks we have the main character, the main person here for while everybody's waiting. She's on the cane here. She's pushing on the cane. It's just the imagery of this is an old person. We don't see the face, but this tells us enough that the hunched over position, this with the cane, this is going to take a long time because this is an old person. Again, a lot of really clear imagery right off the bat, which for you again goes into just clear posing and silhouette. You can see also the bright color, bright color in terms of the white and in a darker color for really clean silhouettes. I just love that. Again, we're getting more and more into spoiled territory. This is a great moment where we think she's on the phone, right? Because she has her arm up here and she talks to herself. I mean, to someone, right? But she's talking, she's alone. And with that arm up, we are thinking, well, she must be on the phone. And then as she keeps talking, she does this. And then she keeps talking too. So you're realizing, wait, why does she keep talking Oh, and then she does this and she's got the little face and it's a longer sequence, but you realize that she is rehearsing. She's rehearsing what is she, what she's about to say. And that's such a cool moment. I love that. We as an audience, we were thinking, well, it must be the phone because she's by herself talking with that pose. And then this change reveals, oh, she's actually not, oh, she's pretending she's rehearsing. More of a reveal of how far this character is going to go to do whatever. Again, I'm going to say too much spoilers, but this is really cool in terms of expectations, what the audience will think and how you subvert that and how you change that and how it changes the whole situation, how it changes how we perceive this character. Just a cool little moment there. This is a bit more traditional thing where this could be a kind of a gear change as a classic exercise in animation. She's doing this, as you can see, like, she gets frustrated and goes back and she is not able to do whatever she needs to do on the laptop again, not too many spoilers. And this is a classic thing where she goes, ah, oh, there's a lot of agitation, right? You can see head move over there, arm move goes over there. There's movement with the fingers. Like there's a lot of movement here, right? She goes back down, moves over, and now the arm comes back up here, a lot of things. And here's the contrast. After all of this, you can see some movement in the hands, eye darts. Then she realizes, wait, I have an idea. And right there. And that's the thing I want to show. So if you have a thought process, you can find a way to show contrast in terms of I have movement, head is moving, body is moving, arms are moving, hands are moving, fingers, eye darts, all that stuff. And now you want to show, wait, I made a change, bam, stop all the movement. Now, this might, again, this might be basic for more advanced animators, but if you are doing this as a student, think about that. Think about the contrast in posing, but also contrast in movement, because you don't see too much here in terms of legs or anything else. All we see is this. So what could you do to show that there's a change, a change in thought? So you have all of that. You can imagine she's thinking a lot and that is externalized in her movements and the hand moves and eye darts. She's processing things, a lot of movement. And now I have found an idea. It's a singular thought and that makes the character stop everything. And then you can see this, oh, blink. Yeah, I can do this slight progression and movement going forward to the laptop to do something else. Now we're really getting into spoiled territory, which is kind of towards the end, but she is talking to the doctors. They won't let her to her daughter. There's a bit of a problem. And what I love about this is this whole setup. So she is there incapacitated. Here's the nurse. 
and we can see the mom comes in. At this point, we know that she's not a good person. A lot of problems between these two. So she comes in as the worried mother, and that triggers quite a reaction in the daughter. But she can't do anything, right? She's stuck, she can't say anything. It's a horrible position to be in, seeing that the dangerous mother, shall I name it like that? The dangerous mother is right there. You can see that, that reaction, oh no, no, no. And then I love this part. This is why I'm gonna show it to you. So she looks at the daughter and has that compassionate hand on the glass. I wish I could help you. And then <laughs> you see the turn towards the nurse. And it's almost creepy how she slowly goes, eyes first over there. But it's still a broader move with the hand. And then as she looks at that, she realizes, huh, I can do this. I love that. This is almost as if her eyes are sneaking. This just makes it hmm, kind of schemish. Oh, I could do something here. And that definitely triggers this reaction. Of, oh no, oh no, you can see the breathing here gets more intense. And then she exits to do whatever she needs to do. And then the camera will turn and then re-emphasize that and so on and so on. Really, really cool moment. And for you, really, it's, it's less is more. In terms of animation, this is not complicated in terms of the mechanics, right? It's just a head turn and then just a dart. But I love this, that, that whole thing of a lot of body movement, the arm, and then what's over there? Ooh, I could do this. And to me, like I said, this, to me, this is like the eyes are sneaking. She doesn't want to do, you know, too much noise, any type of movement. She just has a little quick thought process of, oh, oh yeah. And I love that. So a lot of things covering acting choices, but also a lot of moments in terms of composition and camera reveals, because as you are continuing your animation journey, you might be really good at body mechanics and all the acting stuff. And now you want to open up the shots. You want to use cameras. You want to use cameras to give the character more room to go somewhere, to reveal something. So I thought this was a really cool movie in terms of clear imagery and having very clear camera moves, like I said, to reveal certain things that tell us something about what the character wants, something that a character sees, something that a character reacts to, or something that we as an audience are supposed to react to where comedy is heightened and so on and so on. I thought as a, as a whole movie, I really, really liked this. And I'm curious if you watch this, uh, let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Apparently it did really well on Hulu. It's on Hulu if you wanna watch it there. Link in the description with all the information about where you can find that. Speaking of finding, if you found that interesting and you want me to help you with your shots, you know the drill at the end. I do have workshops so you can send in your shots. I can critique them. I can help you make your shots even more awesome. So you can sign up for my workshops at any time. Again, link in the description with all the information if you wanna check that out. And that's that. Thank you for watching. This is the end, it's a longer clip, but if you spent that whole time watching the whole thing, thank you. You know I'm very appreciative of your time that you spend on my channel. And if you like all this, you don't wanna miss any of the other uploads that I have, you know the pitch, it is YouTube. Like and subscribe, it helps me grow my channel and get it seen on the uh, platform that is YouTube. But that is that, enough of pitching. I will end this. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in my next upload.